ఈ మ్యూజియం సందర్శన చాలా అందమైన అనుభూతి ఇండియాలో ఇది రొమ్మ మిగ సిరంద మ్యూజియం ఆ రకం ఉక్త మ్యూజియం భారత్ కా ఈ నహి సంసార్ కా ఏక్ అద్భుత మ్యూజియం హే కూవి భలో లాగ్లో మ్యూజియం తా దేఖే లైఫ్ అలి వన్ సరి ఈ మ్యూజియం నోట్ లే బేకు మాకా అంగా మజా అని మజి ఫ్యామిలీ ఓవర్ యోన్ ఎక్దమ్ బరేస్ లే అని మజా అని విశేషయం గేయినల సత్యతిలే ఎనికి పరాన్ వాకల్ దనే ఇల్ల ఏ సారా మ్యూజియం అసి కు మే బోత్ వదియా లగదే It is inarguably and by far the crowning glory when it comes to Hyderabad and the globally famed landmarks that the princely state is adorned with. Hyderabad has been named among the world's 100 best tourism destinations for three successive years and the one-man collection of breathtakingly priceless objects housed in one place more renowned as Salarjung Museum is the icing on the cake. One could still miss out on a Charminar or a Golconda fort because similar marvels can be found elsewhere. But Salarjung Museum stands apart as a one-of-its-kind phenomenon. Salarjung Museum is so awe-inspiring and life and times of its founder so fascinating that we at Doordarshan Bharati are documenting an entire series in which each episode will take you around one section of the museum a peep into the history and making of the world renowned institution will open windows into a fantasy world that many can only dream of The special on the astounding museum is a richly deserved one and comes as the perfect salutation to the passionate collection of one individual who sacrificed everything else to realize his goal in his lifetime. Nawab Mir Yusuf Ali Khan was popularly known as Salarjung III. He became the Prime Minister of Hyderabad state during the reign of the 6th Nizam at the young age of 23 years. He was so obsessed with putting together the best from every continent under one roof that he resigned from the post in less than 3 years citing health reasons and never married. I think uh, this has been a very good experience to this museum coming here it's on par with a uh, lot of the world uh, museums which we have seen the way it has been organized the way the entire signage has been put up then the methodology to reach every room history very well printed very clearly drawn and uh, the individual collections have been beautiful the way Salarjung has built it across the centuries and the fact that uh, the government the entire uh, organizing structure of this place has been beautiful tourists should come should see it because it's a must see place for uh, the indian tourist and for the foreign tourists coming in i would rate it very very highly as one of the must see places and uh, me and my family have enjoyed coming here we got to see a lot of the rare artifacts which we only would probably see it in television somewhere for children also it's a very good learning experience to see what our history has been and how it has been preserved through innovative people like salar jung who have given us a view into the past and seen it it's a must see place for us we have enjoyed it here to our endeavor is despite the brochures and books on him and in spite of the birth celebrations children and museum week seminars and workshops conducted at periodical intervals as part of educational activities by the museum administrators his legacy should live on for eternity
You see, Salar Jung was about three months old when his father died. Salar Jung, of course, was born in Pune, as everybody knows. And uh, it was a very big shock for the entire family because this child was barely three months old. And uh, there were hardly any male members in the family. So the then Nizam of Hyderabad, Nawab Mir Mehboob Ali Khan, Nizam the sixth, took it upon himself to see that the child was brought up in the most befitting manner. The child was brought back to Hyderabad and then he was raised in a manner which suited and befitted the stature of the family. In keeping with the loyalty of Salar Jung I, the Nizam thought that, you see, in the absence of male members in the family, he would be the guardian to Salar Jung. A committee was formed and uh, Salar Jung was taken care of both domestically in bringing him up as well as his education, which was given prior importance. There were Englishmen to teach him English. There were Arabs to teach him Arabic. There were people from Persia, Iran, to teach him Persian. And a big contingent of European teachers, French teachers were employed to see that the best of education was given to him. That is how Salar Jung was brought up. As a child, what was remarkable about him was that, you know, he was very different from the other children, if you ask me. Because, you know, as a child, if he was given a toy or a gift, he would, uh, normally a child would fondle with it, play with it, and then throw it away. But Salar Jung never did that. He played with his toys, he fondled with the toys, he made full of use of his toy and then took it back and put it in, in its place, proper place, preserving it to bring it out again and to play with it. This was one trait which was inherent in the child. As he grew, we could see that, you know, this is how he took care of all his precious pieces of not only art but any piece of curiosity which attracted him. Hyderabad, the very mention of the word evokes myriad reactions, each of which is bordered on sentiments that are more or less laced with a personal touch. There is an inexplicable romance to the word and the city that gets reflected whenever one speaks of it. A note of familiarity comes even from those who may have never visited the capital of Andhra Pradesh. Called by several names, the most appropriate title because of its cosmopolitan fabric is Mini India for its unique assemblage of people from all walks of life. Hyderabad is, in a way, a realization of the utopian concept of universal brotherhood and peaceful coexistence. Hyderabad also happens to be the chosen city as it comes packaged with everything that there is for mankind to enjoy. Nature's bountiful tourism destinations, a perfect blend of the historic and the ultra-modern, synchronization of the rustic and the urban. From aristocracy and royalty to the commoner, 
historical relevance to futuristic visions of timelessness, and artistic bent of hues that amalgamates with modern day applications. Changing facets of architectural styles at L. Symbolizing the spirit of the city of Nawabs are three landmarks that stand testimony to the eternal grandiosity of Hyderabad, Charminar, Golconda Fort, and last but not the least, the Salarjang Museum. If the first two are architectural marvels that have stood the vagaries of nature and the test of time, then Salarjang Museum comes off as something different from the mundane museums that exist across the globe. Therein is its uniqueness. It is the world's largest and most envied one-man collection of antiques and houses objects of pristine glory that are Kanoisha's delight. Actually for me, this is the second time, say around 15 years back, I first came to Salajang and saw the entire museum. Personal collection of a family, so huge, so fabulous, so marvelous, it's, it's massive. It cannot be seen in a day, it cannot be seen at least in two days. If someone wants to see it very clearly, properly and minutely, it is not possible to see it one day. This is one of the marvelous museums in India which is an asset. So for Hyderabad it is concerned, it is an asset. So for India it is concerned, it is an asset for us. Officially established on December 16, 1951 at Devan Devdi, the abode of Mir Yusuf Ali Khan or Salarjam III, the museum was inaugurated by the then Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. To accomplish his globe-trotting mission, Salarjung III is believed to have spent a major portion of his wealth, which was quite substantial under any yardstick, on procuring artifacts, antiques and manuscripts from around the world. Salarjung family tree boasts of five generations of prime ministers who served under different rulers. Mir Yusuf Ali Khan was so impressed by his lineage that he kept alive their contributions by keeping on exhibit illuminated Qurans and manuscripts penned by his maternal great-grandfather Mir Alam Bahadur. It has undergone several ownership and administrative changes since. The museum, which was relocated in 1968, presently boasts of 38 galleries that are housed over three separate wings, including central, eastern and western blocks spread over two floors. Each gallery and each floor is a practical lesson in history. They showcase the changing times and tastes that have undergone transformation from evolution to modern times. Salarjung Museum is so extraordinarily priced that the Union government had, by an act of parliament, declared it as an institution of national importance as early as 1961. 
precisely a decade after it came into existence. After all, although it is the third largest national museum in the country, its one-man collection of antiques that trace their origins to the first century is what makes it the most prized structure in the world. Salar Jang Museum is not only a museum, it also has a good library. Library consists of more than 50,000 books on various topics, various subjects. In 2000, two more buildings have been added. Now the present collection have been divided into three parts, like uh, Western collections are placed in Western building, Far Eastern collections are placed in the Far Eastern building, and Indian collections and some prime collections placed in the central building. If you see last during three years, the visitors number is uh, more than 12 lakhs, almost the highest number of visitors in India. Even sometimes museum organizes exhibitions in collaboration with uh, private partners and also other museums in India. Museum also provides all the facilities to the visitors. Almost 50% of uh, galleries are modernized. Museum following all new technology, new innovative methods for the dis display of the artifacts, almost to the standards of uh, world-class museums. The museum accessible to the research scholars to study on the collection. Some of the galleries are placed with uh, multimedia kiosks. Not only that, the museum also going for a good documentation, computerized documentation. By that, the scholars can access the uh, data and also details about the artifacts in future. Not only that, museum also even going for new uh, technology like solar energy we are planning uh, this year. The library also we digitized and we are going to place in intranet. The scholars have accessibility to the library. Museum also having a good collection of manuscripts, more than 8,000 manuscripts the Salar Jang Museum having uh, related to Arabic, Persian and Urdu. By adopting all these good methods of the world class museums, in the Salar Jang Museum. We are going to make the Salar Jang Museum one of the best museums in the world. Details about the collection of Salar Jang Museum can be seen in our website. In future, like this new technology from all the world standard museums, we are going to adopt and definitely will make the Salar Jang Museum one of the best museums in the world. The rare, exquisitely intricate objects found inside the building come from across the seven seas. They include varied pieces like sculptures, jades, mirrors, including the veiled Rebecca, arms and ammunition, embroidery and textiles, paintings and creative masterpieces, enamel, wood and inlay work, carvings, manuscripts, porcelain, upholstery and carpets, clocks and furniture, among countless more. Prinsley Collector, who was born on the 4th of June 1889 and went into eternal bliss on the 2nd of March 1949, spent close to 35 years of his life in scouting for objects. As a treasure trove, the museum is a must visit on the list of everyone, including the tourist, scholar, historian, and students. In addition to the painstaking efforts put in to bring the rarest of rare workmanship, Salar Jung III was an avid promoter of literature and music. In short, he was a man of taste. Salar Jang was, as I told you, was brought to Hyderabad from Pune. As he grew in age, at the age of 24, he was made the Prime Minister of Hyderabad. 
and uh, that was during the time of Nizam the seventh. Now Salar Jang Bahadur was in one of his palaces in Diwan Deori, and he was given total charge of all his palaces and all his assets and all his deories. As Salar Jang went round, he realized that you know his grandfather and father had left beautiful pieces of art and beautiful pieces of curio pieces of curiosity in the palace. Those days, most of these palaces were decorated with all kinds of you know chandeliers and pieces of art. You know they were not. I shouldn't be calling them antiques. But those days, you know, it was like decorating your palace with all these beautiful pieces from Europe and other countries. Likewise, Salar Jung's palace was filled with all these beautiful places, pieces, including chandeliers. Salar Jung noticed that most of these pieces were of value because they were imported from Europe by his grandfather. You see, the Vale Rebecca, Mephistopheles and Margareta. Mar Mephistopheles and Margareta was from Spain. The Vale Rebecca was from Rome. And uh, the Vale Rebecca was done by Benzoni. So these kind of pieces were collected by his grandfather and kept in his palace. As time grew, Salar Singh realized the importance of these pieces. Because when Europeans used to come to see him as a Diwan, dignitaries used to come and see him, they used to gape out at these beautiful These kind of things made Salar Jang to realize that, well, you see, no matter of what riches we have around here, nobody is bothered. But when they see these beautiful pieces of art, they gape out at one another. They look at them, you know, at them intensely. To see that a piece from Rome was brought in here, especially a piece like the Vale Rebecca. That charm of Salajang Museum remains till date and hopefully will remain unparalleled for eternity. Our endeavor is to ensure that the legacy of the great art collector should live on for eternity. Sure, you must have been mesmerized seeing the wondrous collections of Salarjung 3. A visit to the museum is such an exhilarating experience that people come back again and again and from all corners of the globe. It is almost like one is taking a ride back in time given the collection of objects from time immemorial. As a gem that entices overseas tourists, Salarjung Museum has its own special status in incredible India. Simply put, it is True Blue Hyderabad. In the next episode, we will take you around the incredible collection of European marble and metal statuary. This will specially showcase the ones procured from all over Europe, which are examples of exquisite craftsmanship. The wait till the next episode will be worth it.